when I was married the first time to Charlie Cornwell and um, he had gone to graduate school at UVA and you know what that is University of Virginia in Charlottesville and we were living in Richmond and he was always telling me these wild stories about a landlady he had in graduate school whose last name was Scarpetta and just this real character but what I and, and I don't know anything much about her except that I thought what an amazing name I loved the name Scarpetta and I thought what would that be would it be Spanish would it be Italian and I decided that was going to be the name of, of my character and then I decided to make her Italian because I wanted her to cook Italian food because I love and I love all things Italian and so and then I said and in fact, I was talking to Marcella Fierro about this way back in the day and about using the name Scarpetta. And she said, well, you should have a really short name then, maybe Kay. I said, I like that. That's a good idea. So there, there she was. Kay Scarpetta was born back in 1984, long before she got published. I was working in the morgue. You know, I was writing crime novels and I wrote three before that all of them got rejected one year after another. And then I was another year working at the morgue as the last book had failed. And so this went on. And then in the late 80s, these serial murders started in Virginia, in Richmond. Um, and it was absolutely horrifying. Everybody was terrorized because they were people minding their own business in their homes. The victims, you know, nobody could say the victim had it coming or they did something wrong or they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. I mean, these were just people living and someone's climbing through their window. And so, um, I was working at the ME's office when that was going on and, and still writing these books that, that weren't working. And someone had given me the advice that you need to, we, we want to see what Scarpetta really sees. I mean, make her the main character. And what do you really see at the morgue? You don't, I don't think you see the kind of stuff you're writing about in these books. And it's because it was too painful for me. I did not want to let my imagination loose on what I was seeing every day when I was helping out with the autopsies down there and all the rest of it. And then these, these, these crimes began. And I didn't start the book right, right then. Uh, but after the, the person had been caught and all the rest of it, I, st I, re I thought, what would Scarpetta do if this happened on her watch? How would she handle it? And then I asked myself a question. Is it possible that you can write books about crime and not trivialize it or celebrate it? Because now that you've seen what you've seen, you could not bring it upon yourself to do that. That's why I used to get mad when people called my books mysteries, because I said, you don't call it a mystery when there's a dead body on a table. And, um, and I, and so I thought, okay, there's only one way to do this. I'm going to have to do it in a way that's unflinching. If I'm going to show you this, I'm going to show it to you the way it is. I'm going to show you crime for what it really is. And I'm going to show you the good people that solve it. And, and I'm going to do it through this character, because as long as you have Scarpetta in the room, you'll never lose the humanity of what you're doing. Otherwise, it's really easy to cross the line and maybe try to celebrate what should be condemned. Not only just writing about it, but, but having some way to have exposure to things because that evokes, that creates feelings. And I'm gonna give you an example of something happened where no serial killings were going on back in, in whenever it was 1988 or something like that. And I was still, the, you know, of course, still working there full time and I remember I was driving either to or from the office uh, at a quiet time of the day. And I saw this car was circling our building. And I saw these two women, excuse me, two people, um, Asian people, two, two Asian people looking out the window. And I realized they were probably the parents of the most recent victim who was a 15 year old Vietnamese girl whose parents had moved her, the family to America to raise her in a safe place. And this dude climbed through her window while the parents were home and they found her, you know, the next day in her room. And I mean, it was just, it's like the, the worst thing you can ever imagine this kind of stuff could happen. And I saw the look on the faces of these two people as they're staring at this four story stucco building. And I'm sure they're wondering what's happening to my daughter in there. And when you've, or when you've seen the husband who's picking up the box of his wife's cremains, ashes at the, the, the front desk in the lobby. And these people who, unlike me, they didn't walk through that door because they wanted to. Nobody wants to walk through that door, except I did, because I wanted to see what goes on in there. And what I say to anybody that wants to write about anything, try 
to put on those shoes, so to speak, do something to, to see it for yourself. You know, that's what autopsy means to see for yourself, autopsia in Greek and go see for yourself because then you're going to feel something at you and you will remember things in a way that you won't otherwise. Um, that's what makes it real and palpable. I'll be working on a scene and then you know that Scarpetta's got to talk to somebody. She's roll. I mean, who's calling her? You know, hello. And then, well, who's this dude calling her at three o'clock in the morning? Because there's been another one, as he puts it, in postmortem. And then you you got to figure out who that is, and that becomes probably some combination of a of a lot of detectives. I used to, I um, mean, you know, if you you look behind me right here, you see my my police hat back there, from when I my volunteer and my my shoes. I still have my police shoes. See, those are my shoes I wore back on the beat. And so I was riding with the, I would ride with the detectives every weekend to put in my hours because I hated wearing the uniform because all I really got to do was direct traffic, light flares and take dog bite reports. <laughs> so I would go plain clothes and ride with the detectives on the weekends and, and take notes for them and do stuff. But, and, and this is, I mean, anything that was available to me, I would try to go do it to learn. And and so that's how, and that's where the characters come from. You hang around with detectives and you get to know them or you hang around with the lab workers and you and you meet these characters. And then somehow one of them becomes Niels Vander, who's always going up and down the hall with the ink stains on his lab coat, you know, who's the fingerprints examiner. And, and, and these people, I don't really always know where they come from. But I don't think it would happen if I didn't go out and meet real people.